about the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is responsible for immunity or defensive functions of your body. You know that human body has the ability to fight against microorganisms or antigens. So that ability of the human body to fight against the antigens or microorganisms is called immunity. And immunity is given by mainly by the lymphatic system of your body. First, we will see the parts and functions of this system and then we will talk about the lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic system is also a circulatory system. You know cardiovascular system is the main circulatory system in your body, right? But lymphatic system is also a circulatory system because lymph is the fluid that circulates inside the system. That's why this system has vessels called the lymphatic vessels or lymph vessels. Uh, then we'll talk about the cells that fight against the antigens or microorganisms. Two types of cells are the main warriors or fighters. Those are T and B cells or T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. We'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about lymphoid follicles. Inside the lymph organs, we see many lymphoid follicles. What are those structures? We'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about some lymph organs, spleen, thymus, tonsil. Those are the large lymph organs in your lymphatic system. Then we'll talk about a couple other things, virus patches and lacteals. First, <coughs> the parts of the lymphatic system. First, this system has lymph organs. Lymph organs include lymph nodes present throughout the body. Everywhere in the lymphatic system you will see lymph nodes. So lymph nodes are many in number and solely responsible. Immunity. Only function of lymph nodes is immunity. There are many distributed throughout the body. <coughs> and another thing is lymph nodes are small in size, tiny. Then you have thymus, tonsils, and spleen. Also, bone marrow, appendix. So, these structures are the lymph organs in your lymphatic system or body. Okay? Lymph nodes are a small, tiny, many in number and distributed throughout the body and solely responsible for immunity. They don't have other functions. But other lymph organs, thymus, tonsils, spleen, bone marrow, appendix, 
those are rather larger and they have other functions. So those are the leaf organs. Then you have lymphatic vessels. Since this is a circulatory system, as I have mentioned, number two, lymph vessels. What are the lymph vessels? Smallest are capillaries. Or lymphatic capillaries, not blood capillaries, lymphatic capillaries, then collecting vessels. So, collecting vessels get lymph or fluid from many capillaries. So, from many capillaries, collecting vessels receive the fluid or lymph. Then, larger lymphatic vessels. From collecting vessels, lymphatic vessels receive the lymph. Then, <coughs> lymphatic trunk, trunks. So, trunks are larger than the lymphatic vessels and trunks receive the lymph from the lymphatic vessels. Okay? Then, the largest lymphatic vessels are lymphatic duct. Lymphatic ducts. D-U-C-T. Lymphatic ducts. So, these are the lymph vessels. Smallest capillaries. Capillaries give lymph to collecting vessels. Collecting vessels give lymph to lymphatic vessels. Then trunks. Then ducts. Okay? So that's how the lymph flows. Then remember, this is important, the collecting ducts give the lymph to a blood vessel, a vein. That's the subclavian. You already know that. Subclavian. Yes. So you see, eventually, the lymph or fluid is given to the blood where? Into the subclavian vein. Here, the vein. Okay? So, lymph fluid eventually enters into the blood, finally. <coughs> now, uh, trunks, what are the large lymphatic trunks? Large lymphatic trunks are Bronchomediastinal trunk, intestinal trunk, okay. jugular trunk, Subclavian trunk, subclavian trunk, lumbar trunk. So these are the trunks in the lymphatic vessels. And then you know the trunks from the trunks lymph goes to the ducts 
So what are the dots you have? I said there are two lymphatic ducts. Those are the largest lymphatic vessels. What are those? Thoracic duct and right lymphatic duct. So these are the ducts. Thoracic duct is much larger than right lymphatic duct. Right lymphatic duct is the smaller among these two. Okay, so these are the ducts, and then ducts drain the lymph into the subclavian vein. So, those are the lymphatic vessels. Then the fluid is the lymph that circulates inside the vessel. So, those are the parts of your lymphatic system. <coughs> now, from where that fluid comes, into the lymphatic system. You know, in between the cells of your body, you have fluid called the interstitial fluid. Everywhere in the body, you have the cells and the interstitial fluid in between the cells. And what happens? Lymphatic capillaries are everywhere in those interstitial spaces. So these are the lymphatic capillaries. And from the interstitial spaces, fluid enters into the capillaries. So, interstitial fluid enters into the lymphatic capillaries and that becomes the lymph. So, lymph is nothing but the interstitial fluid that enters into the lymphatic capillaries. Is it clear? So, that means what? That means in the lymphatic capillaries you have openings to let the fluid get in. And these openings are guarded by valves and these valves open only inwards, one way. So fluid can, when the pressure in the interstitial fluid increases, that pressure pushes the valve inwards. So the fluid can get in, like pressure opens the door. Only going in, one way door, right? So, but fluid can get out. So, one way mini valves that let the fluid, interstitial fluid get in but will not let it get out. Make sense? So, that's how the lymph comes into the lymphatic system. Uh, Another thing about the lymphatic capillaries, uh, from lymphatic wall of lymphatic capillaries, many filaments arise, and those filaments attach the end of the capillaries to the tissue. So the end of the capillaries will not move too much. So, anchor the filaments, anchor the end of the capillaries to the surrounding tissue. So, 
in the capillary you have one way mini valves you have filaments and another thing which is important about lymphatic capillaries is that lymphatic capillaries don't form network or bed you know blood capillaries form capillary bed you remember blood capillary bed but lymphatic capillaries are dead ended or blind ended they don't form network so <coughs> they end like this i showed you here they don't form any capillary bed okay here you see this picture is showing uh, upper right you see the green structures are lymphatic capillaries and you see the blood capillaries too both are everywhere in your body but you see blood capillaries form network you already know that but lymph capillaries are dead ended or blind ended now if you see the lower picture the end of the of a lymphatic capillary that i showed you here you see <coughs> filaments you see flap like mini valve and that valve those valves open only inwards to let the fluid get in and dead end it <coughs> okay now uh, i have already explained that uh, from the capillaries collecting vessels receive the fluid then pass through the large lymphatic vessels then trunk then duct here not detail in this picture but uh, those are the steps i wrote on the board so you have that how the fluid goes from the capillaries to all the way to the subclavian vein you see the blue colored part is the venous system so uh, where the subclavian vein uh, very close to the heart under the clavicle receives the lymph from the duct You see duct giving lymph to the subclavian vein. <coughs> Now, uh, lymph capillaries are similar to blood capillaries, except lymph capillaries are very permeable. So the interstitial fluid can easily get in, right? What's the purpose of taking interstitial fluid into the lymphatic system the purpose is you know that if any infection for example in this part of your tissue some microorganisms have entered here these are the microorganisms okay so the first invade into the body and enters into the interstitial fluid or spaces it's not easy for them to get into the cell right so they will stay outside of the cell in the interstitial fluid now you see when the fluid will get in into the lymphatic capillary that fluid will take the microorganisms or antigens inside makes sense so fluid is continuously getting in and taking the microorganisms or any kind of antigens or dead cells into the lymphatic system that is the goal and then when these microorganisms pass through the lymph nodes or other lymph organs thymus spleen bone marrow they are separated and destroyed we'll talk about that just know that that's the reason why the fluid is continuously getting in the lymphatic capillaries the fluid is taking the microorganisms antigens dead cells abnormal cells into the lymphatic system so very permeable <coughs> i have already mentioned that one way flap like mini valves are they are filaments are they are right? uh, dead and dead so those are the properties of lymphatic capillaries now vessels lymphatic vessels are similar to the veins except in lymphatic vessels the wall is thinner than the 
thing. And in refitting vessels, you will find more valves than the veins. <coughs> veins also have valves inside, uh, especially the veins of your leg have many valves, but lymphatic vessels have more valves than the veins. Uh, lymphatic vessels anastomose more frequently. That means from lymphatic vessels, branches arise more and get connected to each other, anastomose. And <coughs> collecting vessels, collecting lymphatic vessels uh, in the skin travel with superficial veins and deep lymphatic vessels travel with the arteries. You know in your body, arteries are located in the deeper part and veins are in superficial, right? Because you can see the veins easily under the skin. So, veins of your blood circulation uh, are located superficially, just under the skin, most of the cases, but arteries are deeper, right? So, there are two sets of lymphatic vessels, superficial set and deep set. So, superficial set runs with the veins and deep set times runs with the arteries of your body. So, that's, that's what it says. So, two sets of lymphatic vessels, one set runs with the veins, that's the superficial, another set runs with the arteries, those are deep lymphatic vessels. Okay. Okay. Now, I have mentioned there are two ducts that finally receive the lymph from the trunks. So, what are those two ducts? I have already mentioned right lymphatic duct and thoracic duct. Which one is larger? Thoracic duct, right? I mentioned that thoracic duct is the larger. <coughs> now, if you see the thoracic duct, it is very easy to find. Uh, I can show you if you go to the cadaver lab next time, next month we will go there. Uh, it is very easy to find the thoracic duct because it just located on the uh, vertebral column like this along the aorta. So, uh, very easy to find thoracic duct. And if you see the lower end of thoracic duct, there is a pouch or dilated or expanded part that is called cisterna chile. Now you see in the middle of the body, uh, thoracic duct, you can see that and now see the lower end of thoracic duct. <coughs> it is like expanded from a pouch that is called cisterna chile. Cisterna, C I S, cisterna, chile, that expanded or dilated pulse at the lower end of the thoracic duct. Then this part receives many lymphatic vessels, you see, like this, from the lower part of the body. So, most of the lymphatic vessels from the lower part of the body give lymph to the cisterna chile. That's why that part is dilated because it has to receive a lot of lymph from the lower part of the body. Okay? Uh, then, if you see this picture, the thoracic duct goes to the left subclavian vein, enters into the left subclavian vein. And another duct is the right lymphatic duct which is the smaller one that one goes to the right subclavian vein so thoracic duct to the left subclavian vein and right lymphatic duct to the right subclavian vein that's easy if you know right right then another one goes to the left <coughs> now since the thoracic duct is much larger than the right lymphatic duct thoracic duct receives lymphatic, uh, ly lymphatic fluid or lymph from three-fourth part of the body, 75% area of the body. 
So, this picture is showing from which part of the body thoracic duct and which part of the body right lymphatic duct receive the lymph. Now you see thoracic duct receives the lymph from the whole lower part of the body. You see the picture, whole lower part of the body below the diaphragm. And now if I see the upper part, upper left half, upper left half. That means three fourth part, whole lower part and upper left half. Upper left half means what? Half, left half of the head, left half of the neck, left half of the thorax, right? And left upper limb. Make sense? So that's the one quadrant, one fourth. And the entire lower part below the diaphragm. Right lymphatic duct receives limb from rest one fourth part. That means upper right quadrant, this part. Right half of the head, right half of the neck, right half of the thorax and upper right limb. <coughs> okay, here you see uh, uh, this picture is better than the last one. First, let's see the bottom part. Uh, you see the cisterna chile, expanded lower end of thoracic duct. Thoracic duct lies on the vertebral column, right, and goes to the left subclavian head, where the internal jugular and subclavian they are formed. So near the internal jugular, but it enters into the subclavian. And you see, right thoracic duct goes to the right subclavian vein where near the internal tubular vein. Okay. Now, when the fluid passes through the lymphatic vessels, like this is one lymphatic vessel, this is a lymph node and then lymphatic vessel, another lymph node lymphatic vessel, okay, or then enters into the large lymph organ like thymus, okay, lymph node, lymph node, lymph node are many. Uh, so, the lymphatic vessels take the fluid to the lymph organs. So, the fluid gets into the lymph node or other lymph organs and then get out. When the fluid passes through the lymph node or other lymph organs, what happens? Very important function takes place there. Lymph organs and lymph nodes are like check posts. Like what? Check posts, you know, check post. If you want to cross the border, want to go to Mexico driving, there are check posts, right? On the north side, you have Canadian border, right? So there are Canadian check posts. In the south, you have Mexican. And which side has more check posts? South, right? And the Canadian, uh, Canadian side is more like safe. <laughs> South is like uh, the chance of penetration is more, right? <laughs> so we have very, you know, uh, huge number of check posts in that side. So when the fluid is passing through the lymphatic system, lymph nodes and other lymph organs work like check posts. So they will check the fluid because fluid might has what? Antigens, microorganisms, dead cells. You remember I said that those things can enter into the capillaries. And now these organs do what? These organs work like check posts. Like if you want to enter into USA from Mexico, they will do what? Check, right? We'll stop your car and we'll check it. Check your car, check you. And if they think you are harmful, they will do what? They will separate you, right? They will not let you go and probably will destroy you or put you in, in jail. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, 
the lymph nodes and lymph organs are doing the exactly same thing filtering the fluid separating the enemies and destroying them okay so inside the lymph organs you have the guards right with what guards with guards right <laughs> like they will destroy they will fight and destroy the enemies <clears throat> so lymph nodes and other organs like thymus bone marrow tonsils they spleen they separate and destroy the antigens or microorganisms or dead cells okay now inside those lymph organs what are the cells they fight against those microorganisms or antigens the main warriors are t cells and b cells t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes those are the main guards or fighters and they are very active okay t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes there are other cells too they also destroy the microorganisms like macrophages okay macrophages uh, you have mast cells so those are other cells but t and b lymphocytes are the main who like the supervisor who <laughs> huh? who uh, the t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes not supervise they are destroyer they will destroy okay they will destroy they will fight macrophages you know engulf right phagocytic cells so they will also destroy the microorganisms but who are the main warriors t and b cells they are those are the main <clears throat> now uh, what are the antigens antigens very important antigens are proteins or carbohydrates that enter into the body proteins or carbohydrate structures that usually write it down usually enters into the body from outside but not always usually comes from outside and try to harm your body try to harm your body <coughs> now uh, microorganisms right bacteria virus those come from outside right and enter into your body and cause harm so those are antigens make sense coming from outside but sometime your own body cells can act like your enemy so they will be considered also as antigens because they are harmful make sense for example cancer cells you know that right produced inside your body but those are harmful cells is it clear tumor cells those are not coming from outside are being produced inside the body but they cause harm so they will be considered as antigens too that's why i say usually come from outside but can be produced inside <clears throat> mismatched blood cells like if your blood type is a and if i give you blood type b you know on the surface of b cell, red blood cells you have b antigens right so that will be considered as enemy makes sense and will be destroyed so mismatched red blood cells are also considered as antigens so <clears throat> anything that can cause harm uh, to your body will be considered as antigens they can come from outside usually they do but can be produced inside the body too now one important 
thing which is very important is antigens trigger the production of antibodies in your body so antigens when antigens enter into your body or produced in, in inside your body they trigger the production of what antibodies that is very important statement okay and antibodies fight against the antigens in response to antigens your body produces anti antigens your body produces antibodies okay now two types of cells are housed inside the lymph organs t cells and b cells they are housed inside the lymph organs why some lymphocytes are called t lymphocytes some lymphocytes are called b lymphocytes you see from the stem cells so stem cell lymphocytes are produced so many lymphocytes are produced from the stem cells after the lymphocytes are produced from the stem cells some lymphocytes are housed inside the bone marrow and some lymphocytes go to the thymus so some lymphocytes go to the bone marrow and are housed there and some go to the thymus <coughs> and get their training how to fight in those structures so those lymphocytes get their training in the bone marrow when they come out they become B lymphocytes, bone marrow starts with B. So after the training, when they come out, they become B cells or B lymphocytes. After getting the training from thymus, when they come out, they become T lymphocytes or T cells. So these are T. cells thymus t so they are trained differently now you tell me you, you all know uh, young kids sometimes they are recruited in army right military or army or navy and then they know nothing they don't know how to you know operate the equipment or guns then they are sent to different training camps right like you go to this this camp you go to that camp and they are trained differently it's like that these lymphocytes after they are produced by the stem cell they are naive they don't know anything right they don't know how to fight then they go to different camps bone marrow and thymus and get their training and these cells become b cells these cells become t cells now b lymphocytes what kind of training they get they learn to produce antibodies so b cells produce what antibodies and t cells learn to do phagocytosis antibodies and T cells don't produce antibodies. They do what? Phagocytosis. And go. I go. Sorry, I cytosis. Uh, so you see, they learn to fight against antigens in different ways. Okay. Now that is uh, very important. That. how t and b cells are different 
Jesus uh, could be different types. Just know uh, what are different types of T cells. Some T cells are called memory T cells. Some are helper T cells. Some are suppressor. T cells. Some T cells are called cytotoxic T cells. So those are different types of T cells and they work differently. Your immune system or immunology is very vast and if you were in NP, you are not learning everything, but just know that T cells could be different types. Memory T cells, they store the information about previous invasion. If any microorganism has entered into your body before, like five years ago, the T cells, some T cells can keep that information, right? When second time, the same type of microorganism will try to invade, they will quickly respond. Make sense? So, they can keep the memory. Helper T cells help the other T cells to engulf or fight against the microorganism. Enhance the function of other T cells. So, the other T cells will be more strong and fight. Suppressor T cells. Suppressor T cells uh, play a very important role. You know, sometimes if your immune system responds too much, it can, right? Like, you don't need too much response from your body, but your body is responding too much. Your immune system is responding too much, right? So, in that case, the suppressor T cells will inhibit or suppress okay, the immune system or activity which is very important sometimes your body uh, responds too much and that can cause complications you know autoimmune disease have you heard that autoimmune your own body is producing you know uh, immunity against your own healthy cell which is not good right cancer cell is fine because your immune system should destroy the cancer cells right or tumor cells but if your immune system is too sensitive and you start to destroy your healthy cells, that is autoimmune disease, okay? That is not good. So in that case, suppressor T cells will be activated and keep the uh, activity suppressed. Cytotoxic T cells, very important. Cytotoxic T cells, its name is telling you. Cyto means cell, right? Cyt, toxic, harmful. So cytotoxic T cells, Kill the cells. What kind of cells? Abnormal cells like cancer cells or tumor cells or infected cells. If some cells are infected, right, there is no chance they will survive. So cytotoxic T cell will kill the cells with the microorganisms because those cells are filled with microorganisms, right? If some cells get infected, those are infected cells. Microorganisms are already there, right? And cytotoxic T cells can kill them. So kill abnormal cells like cancer cell, tumor cell, make sense? Kill <coughs> infected cells in our body. Uh, that's the function of cytotoxic T cell. So just know that those are some important types of T cells. Now B cells, you will learn in microbiology more, much more. B cells could be uh, the, the memory B cell and 
plasma cells. Now, memory B cells work similar way as memory T cells keep the information of previous invasion. If you got any, you know, antigens before, some B cells will keep that information and will prevent future invasion. So that's the function of memory B cells. Some B cells become plasma cells. This is very important. Plasma cells produce huge amount of plenty of antibodies. We already know that B cells produce antibodies, but plasma cells, when the B cells are converted to plasma cells, remember, you can see here in this slide, uh, some B cells become plasma cells and that plasma cells can produce huge amount of antibodies, more than B cells. <coughs> Okay, now we'll see a lymph node. You know, lymph nodes are many, tiny, smaller, and distributed throughout the lymphatic system. Uh, lymph nodes, although are present everywhere, but in some areas in your body, the lymph nodes are clustered, more densely present. So, what are those areas? You know, when you go to your doctor, you have seen doctors quickly check like this, right? Like this. And see if any enlargement of lymph nodes has occurred. Okay. So, those are the areas where the lymph nodes are clustered. In your cervical area, just under the mental, you know, this is the mental area. So, submental, we'll say submental or cervical. You have learned in NP1, this area is called what? Chin is called mental area, remember? Mental, so submental or cervical, that's fine. Cervical or sub submental in neck. Then axillary. Axillary area. Then inguinal, you know this area is called groin area, it's called the inguinal area. So, in those areas, the lymph nodes are more clustered, more in number. Now, <coughs> inside the lymph node, as I have already mentioned, inside the lymph organs, you have T cells, B cells, those are the main warriors, but also have macrophages. I mentioned another cell, mast cell, and plasma cells. Plasma cells are actually uh, the cells come from B cells, right? produce plenty of antibodies, I just mentioned it. So those are the cells uh, inside the lymph nodes. Now, if you see inside the lymph node, you will see two areas, outer cortex, inner medulla. In the outer cortex, you have follicles. So like this, this is a lymph node, it's like bead shape but very small. Now this is the inner part, this is the outer part. So this is cortex and this is medulla. <coughs> In the cortex you will see kind of round structures, these are called the follicles. Follicles are filled with T and B cells. So, T and B cells are heavily, densely present inside the follicles. They are also present in other parts, but in, inside the follicles, they are densely, heavily present like this. So, these are the follicles in the cortex. T and B cells are heavily present. You will see follicles in all lymph organs. Okay. 
we know that the lymph organs house the T and B cells, right? But where they are mostly present inside the follicles. That's why if you see uh, under the microscope, you will see those areas look darker because more densely the cells are present. Anyway, <clears throat> so now the lymphatic vessels enter into the lymph node and you know that the lymph fluid is taken into the lymph node through these vessels. So these vessels bring the fluid inside the lymph node and some vessels take the fluid out from the vessels, uh, sorry, lymph nodes. So these are the vessels bringing the fluid in and then fluid will be filtered, right? And enemies will be separated and these cells will destroy them. T, B cells, macrophages, right? Plasma cells will destroy them. So the function of the lymph node is filtering the fluid, incoming fluid. will filter and separate the enemies, antigens, and then these cells will destroy them. Is it clear? So filtering or separating and destroy. Uh, then the fluid will get out. So this fluid is more clean than this fluid. These vessels that bring the fluid in, these are called afferent. Start with A, afferent vessels. And those fluid, uh, vessels take the fluid out those are called different. Start with E. So remember E exit A arrival. Okay, so that way you will uh, easily remember. Fluid arrives and then exit. Different and different vessels. Now, one thing is important the number of afferent vessels is more than the number of efferent. That means what? Fluid gets in more than the fluid gets out. More fluid amount gets in because the vessels, efferent vessels are more in number which is very important. Why it is important? That fluid stays longer inside the lymph node. Make sense? Because getting out slowly, right? Getting in first, but getting out slowly. So, the fluid stays inside longer. And that allows the lymph node enough time to filter the fluid and then kill the antigens. <coughs> Another thing if you just notice here in this picture, you see afferent vessels and efferent vessels. Both have one-way valves if you look inside and that is what the fluid will get in to the lymph node but will not be able to get out through the efferent, efferent vessels and when the fluid gets out through efferent will not be able to get back. So one-way flow of fluid to ensure one-way because, you know, once the fluid is clear, clean, then it should not get back. Uh, this is a histology of a lymph node under the microscope. Now, here you can see the follicles better. This is just the cortical part, mostly cortical part. So, you see the outer cortex uh, where you have those kind of round or oval shaped structures. Those are the follicles and they look kind of darker because the cells are more concentrated inside the follicles. Just know that. <coughs> okay, so that's the lymph node. Now, other lymph organs are spleen, thymus, tonsils. So let's talk about those, spleen, 
you have one spleen in your body which is the site of lymphocyte proliferation so you know T and B lymphocytes so lymphocytes can proliferate multiply many times proliferation increasing in number and also spleen monitors the situation that is called immune surveillance immune surveillance and response so spleen can check the fluid monitor the immune um, response and if needs more response like mic microorganisms are more then spleen will proliferate the lymphocyte will increase the number of lymphocytes and release it to the fluid. Uh, spleen cleanses the blood, old blood cells. You must remember I mentioned two organs are called graveyards. Remember that for the red blood cells, old blood cells, spleen and liver, right? So spleen is a site where old blood cells are destroyed. So blood <coughs> is cleaned. Uh, and the spleen contains lymphocytes, houses the lymphocytes, macrophages, and huge number of erythrocytes, red blood cells. Because we know that red blood cells, old red blood cells go to the spleen and eventually they are phagocytized by the macrophages. So that's the spleen. <coughs> Immunosurveillance and response and proliferation of lymphocytes. And another, so first sentence is the immune function. Then second sentence is uh, destroying the old blood cells or aged blood cells. Uh, if you cut a spleen and see inside, clearly uh, you will be able to see without microscope two distinct areas. Red areas are called red pulse and white colored shiny, white colored area. If you just cut the spleen and see inside, uh, you will see the white areas are called white pulse. Why some areas are red and some areas are white? <coughs> In red areas, you have sinuses. Anybody, what is a sinus? Just simply tell me. Cavity. Cavity, very good, right? You remember maxillary sinus, the sinuses inside the bone, you should remember, right? Sinus. Sinus means open space space so in red pulp areas you have many what sinuses that means cavities spaces and those spaces get filled with venous blood blood that's why when you see that areas they look red because of accumulation of blood in the sinuses now, around the central artery, splenic artery, you already know, splenic artery comes from celiac trunk, you must remember, right? Three branches, gastric, splenic, hepatic, from celiac trunk. Splenic artery goes to the spleen, right? And then divides inside the spleen and form the central arteries. You see there in the picture. And around the central arteries, you don't have any sinus. That's why no blood accumulation and that area looks whitish compared to the other areas. So that's why they are called white pulse around the central arteries. No sinus. Now, <coughs> so you know the functions of the spleen and structure of the spleen. Now, let's see. Uh, Splenectomy is a clinical condition. You know that, uh, you know, sometimes enlargement of a spleen occurs, right? So, uh, that enlarged spleen can cause 
pain and other complications and in that case uh, now doctors may decide to take it out because spleen although is responsible for immunity remember one thing that you have many organs those are responsible for immunity right not only spleen because lymph nodes are so many right you have tonsils you have thymus right you have appendix you have bone marrow so lymphatic tissue is everywhere right so removal of one or two organs will not cause a big problem that's why you can easily decide thymus thymus is located here the upper part of the thorax and this organ is interesting in very early stage if you see an infant the thymus is so big large that it occupies almost whole upper part of thorax so very big and gradually it shrinks gets smaller uh, why in early life the thymus is bigger because you know that it takes years to mature the immune system or develop the immune system establish the immunity or immune system in the body so in early stages of life your immune system is very weak your immune system is performing poorly so thymus has to work a lot but when the immune system slowly develops in your body the thymus function of thymus decreases it shrinks and eventually becomes like this and stays here uh <clears throat> now uh if you see uh inside the thymus you will find some structures those are called thymic corpuscles or hesse's corpuscles same thing and <clears throat> you must remember i mentioned that t lymphocytes get their training get mature inside the thymus right that's why they become t and it is supposed that those thymic corpuscles or hesse's corpuscles are responsible for uh, training or making the lymphocytes mature inside the thymus uh, <coughs> a lot of research is going on uh, but that is uh, you know one uh, uh, hypothesis t cells get mature or developed in the uh, corpuscles so here you see inside the thymus this is the histology you see the thymic or hesse's corpuscle and outer part has cortex like leaf node and inner part is the medulla in the cortex you see here cortex looks darker than the medulla why because in the cortex you have more cells lymphocytes are housed that's why that area is darker uh tonsils tonsils uh, are lymph organs too and there are three types of tonsils in human body uh pharyngeal tonsil which is also known as adenoid have you heard that adenoid adenoid which is pharyngeal tonsil and one usually one in number then you have two palatine tonsils and two lingual tonsils so usually five <coughs> and tonsils are mostly located around the upper digestive tract like around the mouth and pharynx like here around the upper part very upper part of your digestive tract now uh although tonsils are responsible for immunity right those are lymph organs sometimes what happens uh tonsils can get infected too right microorganisms can cause 
infection in the tonsils and that is called what tonsillitis right you have heard i believe all of you tonsillitis is the infection uh, 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 in the tonsil or infected tonsil uh, and that can cause problems sometimes there could be two types of tonsillitis acute and chronic so chronic will last long right acute you know you get then get um, relief quickly but chronic uh, persists stays for long time uh, if tonsillitis uh, occurs very often or if it is a chronic tonsillitis sometimes doctors decide to remove the tonsil because you have other lymph organs you remember i said so removal of one or two will not cause big problem so uh, that is called tonsillectomy tonsillectomy removal of any tonsil in general tonsillectomy ectomy is surgical removal okay taking out and now if specifically we indicate the pharyngeal tonsil that will be termed as what adenoid tectomy excess adenoid is pharyngeal tonsil right so removal of specifically if we want to indicate that one that is adenoid tectomy adenoid tectomy uh but in general removal of any tonsil you can say tonsillectomy <coughs> another term this is adenoidectomy another term is you will hear adenectomy that is slightly different than this right adenectomy is removal of any gland in your body tonsil is a gland too but any gland removal full of it or part of it is termed as adenectomy Uh, so the location of those tonsils, palate and tonsils, palate, posterior end of oral cavity. You know palate. You must know the palate. If you put your finger and move it up, you will touch the roof of the mouth, right? So all the way to the back of the palate, uh, very close to the palate. That's why called palatine tonsils. Lingual means tongue, uh, grouped at the base of the tongue, and pharyngeal. in the posterior wall of nasopharynx behind the nasal cavity you have nasopharynx the upper part of pharynx attached to the wall <coughs> uh if you see uh, a tonsil the outer surface of the tonsil there are crypts like pollix like this so these are the crypts These are the crypts, so like this. And the folding is the crypt. So why there are many crypts? What happens? You know, the sometimes body fluid accumulate there, and that help the tonsils to destroy the microorganisms. Those enter here in the crypt. So they are basically, you know, uh, trapped there. in the crypts and then they are destroyed so those are called tonsillar crypts pyers patches pyers patches are the lymphoid follicles aggregated lymphoid follicles in the wall of the late part of a distal portion of small intestine so you see here not only in those lymphoid organs i have mentioned which lymphoid organs i have mentioned you remember lymph nodes right tonsils thymus spleen i said bone marrow appendix right those are the lymph organs but outside of those organs also have lymphoid follicles not only in, on only in those organs where huge number of lymphoid follicles are present in the wall of the small intestine you know small intestine is very long and in the distal part end part or last part 
uh, of the small intestine, you have huge number of lymphoid follicles, and those aggregated lymphoid follicles are called fires patches. <coughs> now, uh, it's a common sense. Why, in the wall of your intestine, you have so many lymphoid follicles? Those are filled with T and B lymphocytes. You know that intestine wall or intestinal wall is one area where the microorganisms or toxic chemicals can easily enter into the body because you take the food. You are taking eating food all the time, right? And food might have microorganisms. You don't see. You can see microorganisms. Actually, the food has microorganisms. So we are taking and nutrients are absorbed through the wall of the intestine, right? So you have the guards, many guards there. That is one potential, potential you know, um, uh, barrier to which the microorganisms can enter. Another is respiratory tract. So those are the two main ways how the microorganisms can enter into the body. Respiratory through air or through the food. That's why you have so many follicles there. <coughs> Lacteals. Lacteals are the lymphatic capillaries in the intestinal villi. Inside the intestine, you have many finger-like structures like this. Those are called villi. Some people say villi. Villi are finger-like structures in the intestine. So this is the inner surface of the intestinal wall. So in the intestine, you have finger-like structures. These are Now, this is a lymphatic capillary, lymphatic capillary, lymphatic capillary. Also, inside the villi, you have blood capillaries. So, this is a blood capillary. So inside the villi, you have both lymphatic and blood capillaries. Now, blood goes to the intestine to get the nutrients. We all know that. And this is inside the intestine. So you have two molecules here, nutrients, inside the intestine. So these are the nutrients, okay? Proteins, carbohydrates, fats. You know, proteins, carbohydrates, Fats. Those are the nutrients, molecules. So, <coughs> proteins and carbohydrates can easily enter into the blood capillary because they are smaller than the fat molecules. Fat molecules are larger and they cannot easily enter into the blood capillary. You must remember, I mentioned that Lymph capillaries have more uh, openings, so and larger. So what can happen? The fat molecules can more easily get into the lymphatic capillaries in the villi, and proteins and carbohydrates can easily get into the blood. So these lymphatic capillaries in the intestinal villi are known as lacteals and they are responsible for the absorption of fat from the intestine. Fat molecules, okay, large fat molecules. So that's the function. Now you can ask me, then blood is taking proteins and carbohydrates, right? Blood is absorbing protein and carbohydrate, uh, but fat is going to the lacteals, which is a lymphatic capillary, right? Uh, it's not going to the blood. Right? But you know, eventually, you remember, the lymph will finally will go to the subclavian vein. Remember that? Ducts will drain the lymph into subclavian vein. So that's an alternative path, but eventually, the fats are going to the blood. <coughs> so these are the lacteals. 
Here you see the aggregated lymphoid follicles. Those are called Peyer's patches in the wall of the distal part of the small intestine. You see many those kind of round structures filled with lymphocytes, right? Okay, so let's stop here.